I'm Tess Hatch, partner at Bessemer Venture Partners and aspiring astronaut. Today, we're in Denver, Colorado to talk to aviation startups that are taking off. Imagine a future where drones deliver you emergency medical supplies, or maybe even a late night pizza. Could you imagine flying from London to New York in a little over three hours? Or even better, if LA traffic is bad, you could just hop into a flying car and zoom over the congested freeways. Today, our skies are underutilized, but to an aerospace engineer, they are a playground. Deep Tech 100 winners in our aviation category are exploring the wide blue yonder, developing new innovations across commercial drones, flying cars, and even supersonic aircraft. We're extending a special congratulations to Andrel, Zipline, Skydio, Shield AI, Volocopter, and Boom Supersonic. Six startups on the XB100 list, the definitive ranking by scientists of the world's top private deep technology companies. Supersonic flight travels faster than 761 miles per hour, also known as Mach 1, or the speed of sound. The world first saw supersonic airliners in 1976 with an aircraft known as the Concorde. Decades later, startups are revisiting supersonic air travel with a renewed eye towards speed, safety, and sustainability. By the end of the decade, commercial supersonic flight promises to deliver us from New York to London in three and a half hours. Today, I'm getting to know Boom Supersonic. I'm sitting down with founder and CEO Blake Scholl, and he's going to tell me how Boom Supersonic took off and how they believe supersonic flight will change the world. Let's zoom back to 2014, and you've created Boom. What inspired you to create this company? I was lucky to grow up in the tech world where everything was getting faster and better. My first job out of school was a software engineer at Amazon. But I've loved airplanes since I was a kid. I've been flying for fun since I was in college. And I set a lifetime goal of flying supersonic and put a Google alert on supersonic jet in my mid-20s because I wanted to be first to know when I could buy a ticket and break the sound barrier. But after a decade, there was basically no progress. No one was picking up where Concorde left off and building a supersonic jet that I could see myself or my friends or family benefiting from. And at the same time, I developed a deep conviction that flying fast is not about going Mach 2 with your hair on fire, Top Gun style, <laughs> although it is very cool. Uh, but it's ultimately about enabling connection on the planet. It's about uh, where can you do business? Where can you vacation? Uh, even who you can fall in love with. An investment in deep tech is an investment in the future of our society, the future of our humanity. Imagine a world where Boom achieves its wildest dreams. How will it impact the world? Our mission is to make the planet dramatically more accessible. We envision a future in which more people can go more places more often, which ultimately is enabled by flights that are faster, more affordable, more convenient, and dramatically more sustainable than what we have today. Imagine leaving the West Coast and being in Tokyo in six hours, or in Hong Kong, or eight or nine, and being able to do that for about the same fare that we would do in business class today. That's what's possible on our first airline, our Overture, and our ultimate goal is to make high-speed flight affordable to everybody who flies. Like, what is XP1 and what is Overture? Overture is our first product. It's an all-business class supersonic airplane. So I think crossing the Atlantic in about three and a half hours, crossing the Pacific in as little as four and a half hours, and being able to do that for roughly what you would pay in business class today. So that's Overture. It's the first economically viable, widely affordable supersonic jet. XB-1 is our prototype airplane. This is the airplane we built first so that we understood how to build a supersonic jet and then we validated the design tools and the design practices that would make Overture a possibility. High speed flight, supersonic. Didn't this happen before? We have the Concorde. What is Boom doing differently than the Concorde? Well, so Concorde uh, was technologically very much ahead of its time, 1960s technology. But the problem was it didn't have a sustainable economic or environmental model. A ticket on Concorde would set you back about $20,000. And at those fares, for most people, it's a bucket list item. It's not really transportation. So our goal is to make high-speed supersonic flight available to more and more people. And on Overture 1, we'll be able to charge business class fares and still have profitable operation for our airline customers. And what about the climate? You keep mentioning more sustainable. How is Boom 
sustainable. But we think about sustainability as both economic and environmental sustainability. On the economic side, the tickets have to be affordable to the flying public, lower fares are better, but also profitable to airlines with significant scale. Our ultimate goal is to enable a lot more travel. We think a world in which more people go more places more often is a better world for us to live in, a better world for our children to grow up in. But today, aviation is about 2% of global CO2. That needs to come down, but if we're gonna have a lot more more travel, it needs to come down a lot. So we're designing an overture to be the first airliner built around 100% sustainable aviation fuel. And what that means is that it could actually be net zero carbon in operation. So our initial customers like United have not just ordered the airplane, but they've pledged publicly to operate it on sustainable aviation fuel on a net zero carbon basis. So the plane that passengers most want to be on can also be the best one for the planet. Tell us about a Eureka moment, a moment where you achieved a technological breakthrough. It was a really awesome moment uh, the first time we saw XB1 taxi uh, late last year. Putting those throttles forward, watching the airplane move, and it was this chilling moment of this thing that used to be on a sheet of paper is now taking form. It's a real airplane. It's about to set some speed records. Theory to reality. And Blake, when do I need to hold my calendar to not just see it taxi, but to see it fly? Our first test airplane will be flying uh, this fall, so just a few months away. It's in the final stages of preparation for flight as we speak. And then I look forward to having you, not just metaphorically, but literally on board by the end of the decade in 2029.